New Zealand's most isolated mainland farm has just finished its annual calf weaning muster despite the challenges thrown up by the Kaikoura earthquake. Muzzle Station is tucked between the seaward and inland Kaikoura ranges on the Clarence River and its land, farm tracks and road were badly damaged in November's quake. The station relies on horses and helicopters to move stock and our rural reporter Alexa Cook took up the reins to get this rather beautiful story. The road to Muzzle Station climbs up over the seaward Kaikoura range, clinging to the gnarly mountainside before dropping into the Clarence Valley. Colin and Tina Nimmo bought the 18,000 hectare station in 1980 from the Murray family. Before the road was built in 1969, Colin says one of the teams of pack horses came to a sticky end. And that's where the, the Clarence Reserve um, horses were coming up the hill and the bluff mule team were coming down and they met on that zigzag and the mules pushed all the horses off right down there dead 14 horses the road is only usable if it hasn't snowed or rained so the station has two planes and a robinson 44 helicopter three years ago colin and tina nimmo made the tough decision to hand the management of the station over to their daughter fiona redfern and her husband guy yeah it was quite a difficult decision it was pretty obvious in the end. I mean, we were rattling around in a big house with nobody there anymore sort of thing, really, and they were in a small house with two children. And Do you miss it? Oh, yeah. We'll take a bit of uh, extracting those memories. I said I left my soul out there. Fiona and Guy have lived on the farm for the past ten years with their two children, Matilda and Arthur. And in November, when the earthquake shook the Clarence Valley, it brought down slips, closing their access road for two months. Guy says the damage is widespread. A couple of huts were quite badly damaged. Our workshop stable was all, had a big cob wall that was completely ruined. Yeah, and then a lot of slips and a lot, mainly track damage. It was a big thing that took us a lot of time and money to fix them. Yeah, it's a lot of, lot of hassle. Still working through with insurance, really. The tracks are going to be ongoing for a few years, I think, because there's just so much uh, loose rock and things above. Every time it rains, it keeps coming down. But despite the disruption to the farm, the cattle weaning muster is going ahead on schedule. Please be careful. We're going to put some timber on there. Abby's going to get away. Organising a muster on such an isolated farm is tricky, but once a plan is in place and 10 days of supplies are packed, we ride 25 kilometres out to the ravine hut where the cattle yards are. Getting the cattle and their calves down from the craggy mountainsides and into the yards is no easy feat, and Guy has a team of locals with dogs and horses helping out. We're very lucky we get, had some good people over the years, and um, still got a good fellow coming out, Rick Denton, that's been coming for, geez, oh, you have to ask him really, but a long time. He was helping out when Tanner and Colin were first here, really. So it's good having some regular people coming back, but we get two or three new ones each year, too. Get up there, solo. It's the first day of the muster and we're starting on the northern boundary of Muzzle Station. It takes about four days to get the 650 Hereford cattle and their calves in. And then it takes about another week to wean the calves, pregnancy scan the cows and TB test. After the yard work is done, the calves and cull cows are driven back to the homestead. <laughs> Sixty-eight-year-old Rick Denton has been mustering and hunting on Muzzle Station for over 30 years. Sort of gets in your blood, these sort of places. And it's rewarding watching all these young ones that are coming through. They really stepped up and they all got real good teams of dogs and I just jog along behind <laughs> trying to keep out the road. Unless something major goes wrong with me, I'll be, keep coming back. And the trip wouldn't be complete without good food. I just put some wood in it, Rico. For the past six years, Merv Moody, who manages Southern Seafoods in Christchurch, has been turning out tasty meals for the workers. It's getting out of the city, it's the countryside, it's the people. It's just a, an old style of life that I quite enjoy. You get away from things like computers and TVs and, you know, it's just a high country feel. It's quite special. You know, you look out each morning and you think, man, am, I'm so lucky to be here. Abby Rowe from Cheviot agrees. Bye. 
she's a well-qualified shepherd with a postgraduate degree in engineering geology, but says few experiences compared to that of farming on Muzzle Station. It's a lifestyle. I mean, work never feels like work. It's not work when you're riding along a ridge line looking at the mountains and you've got your dogs there and, and you're getting paid to do it. That beats sitting in an office chair for 40 hours a week, that's for sure. For Checkpoint, Alexa Cook. If you were watching, Alexa shot a lot of that on her phone. Beautiful work.